Okay, let's paint some flowers. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to start out um, with some easier blossoms. Now, here's here's a, a couple of them out of the you know some of the first lessons that we have here, and uh, when we look at the blossoms that we have, and again, these are just kind of like circles here. Uh, this one, the angle at which I pulled is just a little bit more in at the sideways here, which causes this one to set at uh, a little bit a little bit uh, up and a little bit in. So it's a little bit different. But uh, most of them, when you start with one even like this, is just some blossoms pulled in. Okay, so if you're brand new to painting, this is the one I really want you to start out with. And you'll see each petal, it doesn't make a difference how many petals are here, but I usually stroke the petals with, with two strokes just like this. Now this is just to give you an idea of the blossom shape, all right? Some things that are going to be very important about painting a blossom here is the consistency of our paint. So we're going to work on that uh, here with this simple little blossom shape. The consistency of the paint is very important. You don't want to use paint that is too thick for this particular uh, type of blossom because then that'll make them too opaque and you don't, uh, you don't get this lovely streaks. We want to get some nice streaks inside of here. And again, this is going to take some practice, but let's just let's just say so. These first lessons that you have here, even all the way up to I believe this is lesson four here, where, where I'm going to show you some strawberries, how to take your brush and just plop in some strawberries here, multiple layers here of these little strokes to create more casual blossoms. Um, uh, it's that's kind of a fun piece there too so I'm just going to demonstrate and you have lots of step photos and all the pieces how do we go about painting some of these types of flowers and again you can feel free to vary it a little bit uh, you know for your own taste now this is a board follow the, the regular prep instructions here gave it a coat mix up a background color Put that background color on with ink amount of sealer, sand it lightly with 180 grit or 220 grit sandpaper, gave it a second coat, and then I'm ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, let's say I want to paint some white blossoms, and you can watch each lesson for the kind of colors that I want, or that you're going to use. We have two whites that are here uh, on our palette. We have a white, and then we have an off kind of white, or we call a medium white or toned white. And I'm going to start out first by uh, putting on a circle. When you're starting to paint something, an artist has many different ways in which they can control it. But with the Paint It Simply method, one of the ways in which we have to control something is with a background, painting into a physically wet background, which, which you'll see me do several times, or we put something on the surface for us to paint into. So it's kind of like driving through mud. The, it, you have more resistance if there's something on the surface. If I come in here to stroke white right on top of this thing here, they would go forever and ever and ever because there's no resistance. There's nothing on the surface to resist the brush. And when there's no resistance, then I have less control. If there's a resistance against there, I have more control because it takes more energy for me to do something. So my ability to control it is more. So I'm going to start out with something. I'm just going to paint a blossom here on this board. I'm going to take some medium white down and uh, put a little extender in it here just so I have a and this is going to thin it out okay so I want to thin it to a, a kind of like an inky consistency here okay and so I thin it up pretty good here medium white now you could have a little bit of blue in this if you want so but let's just say I'm going to put on a circle here and so I'm going to take and you can you can smash on a circle this way this way what I like to do is for you to move your brush in many different directions and one of the reasons why is when you move your brush in many different directions you cause this movement I don't want all your stuff in and out like this too much because that will start to stiffen up the the flower here over time let's just step right in there just a bit more so let's just say okay I'm gonna put this on it doesn't even need, need to be perfect because even on this You'll see some of that light color right behind there. It doesn't hurt anything because the white's going to come up so much more. So you'll see a few areas of it 
back up there behind. Now, every every lesson I'll do, let me grab a paper towel here. Every lesson I do, I do a little bit different, and, and that's the purpose of it, to show you some different ways. I want to pinch wipe my brush. I always carry a paper towel in my hand all the time for me to adjust the moisture. So if I feel like something's too wet, I adjust the moisture. If I'm changing colors, you'll notice that I do not paint with any water. I don't use water. I have not used water in, in any of my paintings really in the last couple years. I don't rinse my brush out all the time. I am a what we call a dirty brush painter. I paint with harmony. I change colors. I wipe my brush and change colors. If you're constantly rinsing your brush, you're doing two things as an acrylic artist. Is that you're adding water to the system, which water's fast drying, and water's just going to make everything dry fast, and it's going to give you frustration. And the other thing is you're making all of your colors too sterile, and you'll find artists of old never clean their brush as they move between colors, so that their colors get, did this evolution of colors, not this what I call revolution, not this quick color change. So whenever you have these quick color changes, um, you know between any of your hues, any of the reds and greens and stuff like that, then you don't have as much harmony. Colors should evolve. Colors slowly change and evolve. I mean, if you think about it, you paint an apple, you spend all this time blending this shadow, okay? You spend all this time blending this perfect shadow, and what you do is you put in red, then you, pick, then you clean your brush really well, and then you pick up a shadow and you blend this shadow. Well, that does why are you cleaning your brush so well if the blend is every color that's in between there that doesn't make sense so i don't i got rid of that and my paintings get you know so much so much better so this is going to stay wet and you can see uh there on the surface there we'll get a shine there there we go you'll see that that's wet and you'll see that i have some color on here but it's not a lake see how it's on there very light so in all of the painted simply books you want your colors on there kind of late uh, kind of light the the more opaque you have the color or the heavier you have the color the harder it is to paint the flower the more resistance but that allows you also to make more errors okay so if you're finding when you're putting on shadow colors or you're putting on other light colors or you're coming in with these light strokes and they seem to just overpower everything, we'll put on more of your base color or put on more of the first color here, uh, this medium color, and that will help control it, okay? So I wipe my brush. I always have my paper towel in my hand all the time. And so I'll, you know, I'll have a little bit of that dirty color in there, but I'll take that out, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I, I like to, with the first blossoms, is I like to just put on some color here. Now, what we have, and one of the things that I want you to be able to do when you do any of your types of blossoms that we're going to have here, and of course you have lots of step photos, but you want to put in a kind of yellow color. So we'll reach over and we'll grab some of our tone base yellow. You could have a little bit of the toned red up here if you want or toned orange dark red whatever any of the colors you can see i put a little red in there too but i want to put in i want to tap in some of my yellow here and i want my brush when i do this see where my hand is on my brush it's way back here and i'm just going to tap this around okay you can use your finger to soften the edges of it and everything like that so you don't get a perfect circle you don't want a perfect harsh round circle you can have one but it doesn't hurt any it won't hurt anything but i'll tap some of that color and see where i get some of those even where i had that dirty brush i get some of that color movement that just adds life and interest to your flower you're never going to be able to copy it but you know again so i'll maybe take here on like on this one this one i didn't i used some of my brown my base brown uh here i'll pay, maybe put a little red you know you can just tap in a little red to one side oh that's kind of pretty you know, just tap in a little color there, just lightly, and let the brush do its job. Let this brush just kind of lightly tap it like this, and let this brush do its job here, and you can tap it with your finger, too. This brush paints it so nice, you just got to get a light little pressure and let the brush do its job here, and this light and casual, moving your brush in many different directions, kind of what we call sketch it. If you were kind of drawing or sketching, just going around like that, get very light, okay? Now I'll put in, usually I'll put in the little dark center, the dimple, maybe a little brown, even a little red or something like that. You can have a little black if you want. Put in like a little dimple right in here like this, okay? Sometimes I'll just pinch wipe that brush and, and soften it out and tap that color around a little bit. 
you know so it looks pretty good so I got a nice dark color in there but this is what I like I like to have this color variation going around and then I'll pick up some of my I'll come right down over here let's pick up some of our uh, toned base yellow we want something a little lighter too so maybe pick up some Hansa yellow here okay and I'll even have a little bit of white and of course you can vary any of this this these are just suggestions here but uh, if I'm going to go put on some of this and you'll see every center is just different every center is a little different I'm going to go put on just a lighter color in the center I'll pick up a little bit of the base then I'll just tap into a little bit of the light and maybe a bit a tiny bit of the white so when I put it on my brush I got a lot of color but it's just it's it is modeled what we call modeled so when you look uh, real close at that at that brush there you'll see see how modeled those colors are on there they're not perfect they're modeled and that means when I go to tap those here it's going to um, come off a little different and I'm going to build the front here build this here and you'll notice I just tap the, as I go back here the color will soften out because the colors uh, leaving so I'm it's running in it's got real heavy here I can turn the brush over and go back to heavy color again because that's where colors undisturbed and light back to here and just tap it back and forth but usually what I do is I'll just tap up some more and pick up and heavy and I won't do very much into the back I like to do a lot into the front but very little up into the into the back back there if you get too much Say, okay, well, I lost some of that back there. Just take a little bit of your dark. Just pick up a little dark like this and just tap the dark back down through there and take some of that out. Or if I want to increase the dimple a little bit or get too much, I can just tap around like that. Until you got yourself a center that you kind of like, maybe a little more yellow and white up into the front up here. Yeah, kind of like that. Just, just kind of tap. Let the brush do what it's going to do. And you get So you get this little tapping center. You can smear it around a little bit. You can stroke it around a little bit. You could use your finger to soften anything in there. I want you to get very light. But I, I love the color play. The color play that goes around. Now, you can put that center on in some of the step photos. I'm going to show putting that center on after you do the white blossoms. Okay, after you do the white petals, you can put them on before, you can do them after. But if you put them on like you do here now, because you're playing and you're building the color, then uh, you may have to come back and lighten some again, because you may disturb it with some of the, the white petaling. Okay, what I want you to do is, you know, the blossom's going to look like this. There's not a set, oh no, I can't go back and do the center again, because I've got the white petals. You can go in any order back and forth. Relax. It's fun painting. Just fu just paint it. I want you to follow this philosophy in everything we do in painting simply. You don't follow a specific technique. You paint what the fl you paint what the object needs. What does it need? Well, I put on some white petals now. Well, now I just kind of screwed up some of those white petals. Maybe okay, I'll go put them back on, or I hit the I'll put the center on now. I may have to go back and do it later. That's fine. You paint what it needs. You're not painting base coat, shadow, highlight, strict strict technique okay we're more relaxed and we're having some more fun so i'm going to put this in maybe now i go out there let's let's say i'm going to come out here and start painting some of my petals here around my flower so i might take some of these colors that i have here and let's just add a little bit of extender maybe maybe touch out into the my whites here a little bit what this does is this puts on a very important thing, which we're gonna, you're going to hear me say hundreds of times throughout the whole Paint and Simply process, called the mosaic. I don't like sterile colors. I like to have other colors inside. So, you know, sometimes I'll add some red strokes in later, yellow strokes. Uh, here I add a little bit of blue into a little transparent medium blue into here. Blue would be kind of pretty on this background here, too, to take a little bit of my blue here and put a little bit of the blue into the flower here and there as well. And what that does is that models up the flower so that when I come over this with some light color, it'll look very, very pretty. Now, I'm gonna step into the light color very slowly. I'm just gonna take my brush here. I'm gonna go back into my thin white here like this. Then I'm gonna pick up some white and I'm just gonna tap this white through here. Now, I don't want this white also, I don't want this white really, really opaque, so I'll add just a little extender to it. But see, I'm just going to tap it into the brush here. Just tap it like this. 
So again, you can see some modeling on that brush. Do you see that? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine the petals here, two strokes to every petal. There's one, and then there's two. And the second one will always be just a little lighter than the first one because it's running out of paint. So, okay, I like that. I like that consistency. If it's too opaque, add some more extender to it. Okay, and you can pre-mix up a whole bunch if you want, but then your flower doesn't have as much interest. Like, one of the things I like about little flowers like this is one petal is more opaque than the other one, softer. So you get this variation to it. If I mix up these, if I take and I take down some white and I thin it out and I use that same thinness all the way around, all the flowers are all exactly the same. And you don't have this variation. I like to have a little variation. So I'll put that on here. Maybe I'll tap a little bit more. And if you want to get more of an edge, you just tap right into more of the white on an edge. So when you start another petal here, and I'll just flatten the brush down and flatten the brush down. And if I need a third stroke, I need a third stroke to get in there. And I get a nice pretty little blossom there. Tap into some more color. Move over. Just pull in, just pull in, just pull in like that. So I got three little streaks on that one. If that's too much for you, then you can just stroke right through it one more time there and take one of it out and go to two. Okay, I kind of like that. I'm going to come up here and pick up a little bit more of my white here. Let's grab a little bit of this white here. Just tap through and let's just pull this. Each time I'm pulling straight into the center here, here like that couple of strokes here just pull in and just pull in and I've got a little red streaky on my brush here I'm just going to leave that and just pull in and pull in each time just pulling straight in with that and I'm making blossom different types of blossoms here and by keeping this flat now see I got I got when I come into this you got to decide do I want to put one more in there or do I want to just widen the other two out? And I'm going to sneak one more in there, just like that, because I like that. And if you want, just tap a lighter edge. Just pick up a little bit of edge and put one, and one will come up on top. So now I have this, and then you could sit there and say, okay, well, maybe I want to see a little blue in there. I can just tap in a little blue, and I can pull back out a little blue into some of my petal. Just, just tap it and pull out like this. I can put in a little bit of blue, I can. I didn't disturb my center too much there, but if I did, I could just pinch wipe my brush here, and I can pick up some red and and tap my little red center back up on top of that edge there. You know, there's lots of little things you can do. Pick up some more yellows here and tap a little more yellow right in there like that. Okay. But there's all all different kinds of ways in which you can paint these blossoms. If you tap more into an edge here, okay, then you will get more of an edge onto uh, your flower. So let's say that, um, let me just wipe some of that red out of there a bit. And if I need to clean everything, one of the things I do on my palette is I carry this little thing of extender right here, okay, and I just wipe the extender through like that. And that cleans out my brush enough. Okay. Now, if I want to have more of an edge, and there'll be lots of variations, and your job now is to paint hundreds and hundreds of blossoms and watch that. One of the things that you watch for, though, is the consistency of your paint. Make sure the consistency of your paint. Now, a lot, if you're coming from bottled acrylics, bottled acrylics are really, really thin okay in color and you tend to paint really thin so i want you to try to paint uh, you know these a little yes we're thin here but we try to paint with some things a little stiffer sometimes and maybe have your whites a little thicker than your base here and then you'll get more of a white petal but let's say i wanted to give a double streak here uh to a petal i put some white down here like this and if i tap into my thinner this is my medium white color here. And then I take the brush and I just tap into the edge. So I tap an edge, a little heavier edge right there. When I go to make that petal here, one, and then I go to make that petal two, and I'll tap a little heavier edge there. When I go to make that petal two, you'll see that at, I get this edge or a little bit more of a streaky edge to it and that little edge is where you can get that um 
that look of one on the other. If I wanted it thinner, I if I wanted more of an edge, I'd thin this out a little bit more and tap this edge. Just tap the brush right into the edge. See, I pick up more of an edge there on that one side. So as I'm striking this way, and I'm striking this way, I get more of a I get more of a, a little bit of a streak. And so the more I do that, and I keep thinning this out. See, I'll thin this out a little bit more, and I'll and I'll pick up a little bit more and a little bit more. The more I do that, the more of an edge that I can get to my flowers. The more of a little streaky, streaky edge. So if you want more of an edge, thin out your base more, thicken up the edge of your brush a little bit more here. Just tap the edge of the brush more into the paint like that, and then. As you go to stroke this on, you'll get more streaks or more streaks of an edge, slowly building more and more and more. And practice that. Slowly, slowly change it and look at the feeling of it. Look at the, at the uh, uh, opacity that you have and look at the thinness of the color. Most of painting, most of painting and painting techniques has everything to do with the consistency of your paint. So if something's not working, change the consistency. Thin out the base a little bit more, thicken up some of the other colors and that will... Um, that will really make a, a change for you, okay? Really make a change for you. And uh, then just, you know, when you're doing a set like this, just slowly change it. He's getting thinner and thinner and thinner. So as I change this, I'm going to pick up a little more light right here. We'll leave that a little heavier. But as I change this base, continuing to make this base here thinner, here like this, and leaving just one edge of the brush heavier into the white, I will... I will continue here to make this thing a little, let's get that a little streakier here. So I will get a little bit more streaky and a little bit more streaky and a little bit more streaky. Each time, streaky, 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 okay? If that's what you want to have is a lot of streaks to your brush. Or you can do it a second time. Like I can just tap the edge right here into white, step over here to the side, and I can stroke the pedal here a second time if I want to have a little different look. See, the second time with a little more white will strike that a little different. And all I do is I just, I'm not side loading, I'm just tapping the brush here. Just, here's a little pile of white. I'm just tapping the edge of the brush here into white. It's not like, you know, a perfect flowed side load because I want streaks. And I can use that little bit there to set something up on top and to get more streaks there like that if that's what I want to do uh, to that particular flower to get a lot of looks. So play with that just a little bit and you know play with your consistencies that you have. The most important thing is that wet base that's underneath because that slows down and gives you that resistance. Now for leaves here you have, uh, I like to vary the leaves. So when I'm on a, on a background that's like this, a bluish kind of background, I like to put my green with a little bit of blue in it. When I'm on kind of a yellowish background, I like my green leaning slightly to the yellow. So here I'll be green leaning slightly to uh, the yellow. So on your greens that you have here, this guy's a little bit too bright. So I'll, I'll go with some of my uh, green, some of my dark toned green here. Maybe brighten it a little bit with some of that green. But then I'll slide it for the blue piece. I'll use a little bit of blue. And also I'll use a little bit of this blue. And you'll see these, these beautiful blue greens here come out to this side here of that. And those are the greens that you'll see in in this particular piece, those blue greens. And then for the yellow green, you don't even need to clean your brush. Just go over here to the yellow green side and you'll see you'll get these these kind of beautiful yellow greens that will come over for this side. So you can, uh, and the, the thing is, usually with the greens, greens um, you vary quite a bit and you can vary them by, you know, of course, the background that they're in. And But in, in a lot of paintings later on, we're going to learn how to vary our greens, blue greens, cooler greens, warmer greens, and so on and so forth. Right now, I just want you to adjust the green a little bit to the background that it has here. So if I was going to put some leaves on this one that's right here, I would head maybe to the blue-green side. So it's my base dark green here. 
I can have a little bit of the yellow green that's in there. That's fine. But I want to have a majority of my blue here into my green. So I go over to the blue green side. Now you could go grab a thalo or something like that, that real bright pure thalo, but that's really bright, really fast. But you can do that. You can add it, but it takes just a little. It takes more of the medium blue or the darker blue here to make the change. Any one of these in here works great. And usually what I'll do is I'll just dirty up my palette like this and get a bunch of them out here, and this is what I'll use. To start your very simple leaves, all you're going to do is put out an oval shape. You know, two strokes, three strokes, or whatever, a little bit of, of um, extender into it here, and just start some oval shapes out here. That's that's basically what you're going to do with the leaves. And let them be rough. They're not perfect. You're going to have extra little, you know, uh, comma strokes, filler strokes. I use just the tip of the brush. Just dance the, the tip of the brush around like this. Just dance it around here and just use just the tip. Now when you're stroking, as with with everything, when you're putting these on here, especially these little guys. If you want wide petals, you set the brush down. Let's do, pull it this way. You set the brush down flat. If you want it thinner, then take your brush and turn it slightly so not all of it goes down. If you want it thinner yet, you're slowly heading over to what we call the chisel of the brush. This is the flat of the brush. This is sitting at about a 45 degree angle. This is sitting on a chisel here. It makes a fine line. So when I go through to stroke something, I will sometimes chisel the brush like this, heading to the chisel, going from the flat to the, the 45 to the chisel to make different shaped, uh, you know, little accent strokes and accent leaves. And that's going to take a little practice. But you're going to learn to turn. You know, I'm way back here on my brush, and you're going to learn to turn your brush at different, at using the angles of it, the flat of it, the 45 of it, and the chisel of it to create different shapes. So I put that down there. Then I just take, when I'm down here like this, I just took a little darker blue. You can take a little, uh, a bit of your, like your Prussian blue, which is your phthalo blue and black, make a darker kind of a blue shadow here. You could take some of your green and black and a little blue. All that works. Make just a darker color. And I like all, I always like these colors a little bit different. Uh, so you can see everything here. I always like to model it up a little bit so I get some difference here. But I'm just going to tap in some shadows here and just across this way. So what this does, it what's in, very important here is you see these shadows when they go in and I tap them around like this. These shadows make that blossom instantly look brighter. Sometimes on a big leaf, I just take it and I'll pull down a little bit through the center of the leaf to give a little bit of a vein line here. Then I pinch wipe my brush, pinch wipe my brush. I take some of my greens. You can even warm it up or, or uh, with a little bit of your yellow green if you want. Again, change your greens a little bit. Warm it up a little bit if you want to. Let's get a little bit of our base there and now let's add a little white. But don't mix it up too much. Just tap it through like this. So it's a little bit modely here. A little bit modeled on your brush. So I just like to take a big clump like that. Tap through here. Now, if you pick up an edge like this and you get a little line, you want to kind of tap until that line softens because you don't want to stroke on a line. So you just kind of tap until that line softens, but you'd still have it modeled. And then that's what you come in here and you just and you pull in towards that vein line. Leave, just set it down and then lift off right towards that vein line and leave a little bit of that shadow in there. You can make it color slightly lighter. Tap in there, make it a little lighter. Come back and stroke again a little lighter. The thing is, maybe I'll put a little more yellow green into this one. The thing is, make each if you can make all the leaves a little bit different, that's kind of pretty. You know, they get a little different. You can pull out too. Pull a stroke or so out. I want you to keep these leaves... And I want you to paint them very quickly. You know, sometimes one strokes, two strokes, three strokes. Okay, sometimes I'll just use those as accent colors and vary the color a little bit. But it's very, very simple. You keep everything very, very simple as you paint these uh, here. Now, in the instructions, when you go to do uh, little berries here, you can use your brush and make some reds. 
and just put it down. The old way is to use your finger, you know, use your finger here, and is to take a color down here. Let me just show you to take a color down. Let's just take down some of our, our toned orange and maybe some red here. Any kind of color, maybe even a little bit of white. And let's just kind of tap these together here a little bit. And then you take this color, this loose color like this on your finger, and you use your finger here to make the berry. So you can use this finger here and you can widen it out by just wiggling your finger around a little bit and tap that around you get a little some different uh, size berries then you can take even a little you could use a shadow red violet or a toned red any one of those all of those work and you can just just add a little touch to both sides or down to one side of the berry there like that you can pinch wipe your brush if you want to soften that a little bit, don't soften it too much because it's stroke. If you want to soften, just pinch wipe your brush and just wiggle it around in there a bit, just like that. Just wiggle it and it'll soften that. Okay. If you lose too much color, if you pick up too much color, lose it, just take a little bit of your base and put it in there and you can soften that down right there like that. Then you can put on a highlight by picking a little light color. Tap it in here like this. Tap it. You see, I do a lot of tapping. So the tapping softens it without losing too much of the model color. And I just set it down in there and wiggle it around, set it down in there and wiggle, set it down in there and wiggle. And then if I want to soften that even more, pinch wipe your brush. You can put a little base on it if you want. Now, I sometimes will just tap my finger in and soften it. That's one way to do it, soften it. I distorted the shape of it there a bit, so I'll put that back in. Or just take some of your base and your brush here, just pinch wipe your brush off and just tap right along the edge. Just tap right along the edge and that softens out the berry. But you you want what makes you know all of this whole process really interesting is the variation that you're going to get uh, into the berries. And that's what we want. We want variation into these little berries here like this. We want sometimes it's heavier, sometimes it's not. Okay. Here I did them in blues and you can do different values of them. So if I wanted to set another lighter berry up on top of there, I'll do a lighter pink. I'll set that up on there. I'll even put some uh, dirty uh, fingerprint right on top of that flower. And so I'll set those up. When you go to do these uh, little strawberries that I have here, then I just use the brush and I tap on a base, I tap on a shadow, tap on a little bit here, and I tap the light. And each time I just pinch wipe the brush and tap it. But you, you don't want to blend. They're not blended. They're not blended. Okay? Everything is soft. It's not blended. When you go to do these daisies, these are a nice little variation here with these daisies here. And you'll you'll watch it. Once I set down my my base, and you'll notice the one thing I love about these daisies is that see how they're all stroked out in different uh different ways. And one of the things I did with the daisies that I, I, I different for a variation here. Normally when we stroke and if you're a beginner and you're first stroking, you tend to make every stroke the same width. You tend to make every petal the same width. So what I did here was consciously made a wider petal, an older, more mature, wider petal, and a, a thinner, younger petal up here. And uh, so all I did here, if you, and if you look, you can see I had very transparent base here and then more color as I came here. And I, I tapped in other colors, tapped in other greens and yellows and stuff to help that. But if I was to uh, come in, all I would do is put in some of my base um, color here. And let me just wipe some of that out of my brush. Anytime I need to clean it, I just pick up a little extender and wipe it but we'll get a little bit of the base back in here. And then if I pick up more white right here and tap through a little bit more white, now my color is more light. And if I wanted a second run of petals here now, up on top of this, I would have more white. And that second run of petals now will show up on there as a second run, see? So that's how, uh, if, you, uh, if you're planning, if you're planning to do two layers let's just say so i can i got it nice and soft here i can run another run right up in here like this and start to put some of these on if you're putting this this second run on if you plan a second run then you're going to need to have more white for that second uh to show up so your base needs to be a little bit more transparent if you put some of that on and your second 
one on and it doesn't show up, it shows your original base is too light. So all you have to do is just go back to, to put a light. Let's say I wanted to put a light in here. I couldn't get that in there. Well, just paint it what it needs. It needs more shadow. So just put paint it what it needs. Just go back in here and set in some more shadow again on that flower. You can even take your finger and just run it through like this and that'll help lift off some of the color right there. So the petal is back to a shadow again. Then pick up some of your white, tap that in, and then come back in and put your white petal back up on top and you have another layer. Okay? So if you put something on, let's say I come in here and I want to put a second layer onto this flower here. I could take, and it's too white, my second la my next layer doesn't show up. Well, and let me just put something in here, show you how to correct. Let's say I put this on and it goes, ah, that doesn't show up enough or I want more in it. Take your finger and push through and what you're doing is you're lifting off the white and going back to that original undercoat base that you had there. Right there. See how this lifted that right off? I'm looking for the shadow color up underneath there. If I needed to, if it's not lifting off enough for me, then I could pick up a little bit of my base and I can stroke a little bit of that through. Then I pick up more opaque white, heavier white, and I can come in here and set the other petal, the next run of petals right up on top and they show up. Okay. So in all of this process, what you do is you paint what it needs. So I put this on, it's not showing up, lift it off. You're going to see me do that with lots of blossoms later on in the book and into the rose book. You'll see times where I put a color on and then I lift the color back off because it's not in position of where I want it to go. And that gets more and more and more and more as we get into more intermediate and then into the advanced. You're going to be times where you're lifting colors off just as much as you're putting colors on, okay? But I want you to remember you put, you can, you can play with these flowers. Have some fun and use your fingers. Lift stuff off and play with them. And if something, if light isn't showing up, it's probably because it's too light that's underneath, okay? And you need to get some of those darks. So start out kind of transparent. Watch the consistencies of everything that you do. Play around. Paint a thousand blossoms, and I tell you, you'll know how to paint blossoms, okay? So next time, with the next video, what I'm going to do is going to go in. We have a basic blossom here. You have some different... Um, uh, lessons here to look at, lessons one through four, basically, uh, to look at some of these blossoms. Some of these blossoms, petals I make wider, some of them I make smaller. We'll go into the next one where I'm going to show you more of the uh, layering of some blossoms and some more uh, mosaic that comes with the flowers, okay? So I'll see you over on the next video and we'll do take the flowers a little bit more difficult.